Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you followed me on Instagram, you would probably know that in the past two months I've been busy working on this 1876 ball gown. I'm now at the point where I need to make all the pleated trimming and after some calculation, I realized that this gown requires 12 yards of accordion pleats, which means that if each pleat is half an inch wide as I planned, I will have to make a thousand of these entirely by hand. Luckily, I was introduced to arguably one of the best inventions in the world, the pleating board, and today I will be sharing with you how I made this board. The material needed for this is quite simple. You only need two pieces of cardstock paper and some double-sided fusible interfacing. On both sides of the paper, mark out the width of the pleats. The ones I'm making are all half an inch wide, but the depth of each pleat is only a quarter of an inch, so I'm just marking it every quarter of an inch apart. Connect the two parallel marks using a ruler, and score a line with the tip of the scissors like so. By the way, plastic rulers are definitely not the best option here, since it gets damaged by scissors quite easily. So please don't be like me and get a good metal ruler. Once all lines are scored, use the edge of the desk to fold the board into the shape of the pleats. Here I'm only going with the simplest of all, which is an accordion pleat, but you can also make it into a box pleat, inverted pleat, or whatever shape you want it to be. Turn the iron to the highest temperature, and press the pleats down as flat as possible. Now it only needs to be sticked onto another piece of paper. This could also be a piece of fabric, but given my pleating board is small enough, I will just go with paper. Cut out a piece of interfacing the same size as the board. You can't use double-sided tape or regular glue here because most glue would fail under high temperature. Fusible interfacing, on the other hand, only gets stronger with a higher temperature. I first ironed the bottom of the pleating board onto the interfacing, then ironed the whole thing onto the other piece of paper. While pleating, I had the side that flips open face towards myself. I had already done a few pleats before, so I put the last pleat on the top of the paper pleats, and made sure that the fabric was parallel with the board. To make a pleat, press down the fabric with your index finger, lift the paper pleat up with your thumbs, use your nail to push the fabric to the very end of the pleat and lower it back down again. Because my pleats are so narrow, it's very easy for them to come undone. That's why I had to iron it every single time I made a new pleat. However, if your pleats are wide enough, you can save time by pleating the whole row and then press them all together. You can also use a ruler or credit card to push the fabric in if the folds are too deep. Once the roll of pleats is done, remove the board from underneath. Although the pleats have already been pressed, they still look a bit wibbly wobbly. So I mixed some white vinegar and starch into the water, sprayed it all over the fabric, and ironed the whole thing again. This way the pleats will look a lot neater and are less likely to come undone. If you are making a lot of pleats like I am, you could also roll them up onto a paper towel roll for easier storage. I hope this is helpful to those of you who are suffering from hand pleating like I have been in the past two weeks. 
If you are curious about the 1876 ball gown making, or simply just enjoy watching random sewing videos, please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. This dress is almost coming to its completion, and I cannot wait to share the making process with you all.